Good morning. Thanks for joining me today at Cuddles and Milk in Petaluma. I am talking about our Monday series again. I know we missed last week because of the holiday, but we're going to get back on this tongue tie. So this is episode four. We have talked about what is tongue tie? Is there more? What does it mean for breastfeeding? Where to get help and what did happens on day of procedure? So now we're going to talk about after. You've already been diagnosed with, baby's been, been diagnosed with tongue tie, had the procedure either for anatomy or phrenectomy, depending upon who performed it. And you just had the procedure, you're going home and you're like, well, now what? It's all going to get better, right? No problems, everything's easy? Not usually. So first thing is that um, it depends on how old the baby is. If you have a phrenectomy done at day two, you're very likely to have, you know, maybe a few more bad feedings and then it'll be fine. If you have a phrenectomy done at two months old, you've probably got at least two to three weeks of hard work ahead. Okay, so that's the first thing of thinking about it as it's not the absolute fix all. While it is essential to getting better, it's kind of like having a broken bone and having surgery. Okay, so yes, they put it back together and it's great. But after surgery, now you need physical therapy, you need to do your exercise at home, you need to do all these things to make sure that it stays better and that you get your strength back and you know how to use it. The phrenectomy is the same thing. So in terms of your um, physical therapy, you're gonna work with lactation. You're gonna have body work. You're gonna do things like that. Chiropractic is great. Um, uh, cranial sacral therapy is great. Those are both options for how to help the baby's body be able to handle this. Another thing is working with lactation. You need to be figuring out how to help baby use their new mobile tongue the way that it's supposed to be, okay? Um, so that's really big. Those are your kind of your physical therapy is those sessions with someone where you're with a cranial sacral therapist, you're with a um, chiropractor, you're with a lactation, okay? And those are kind of two categories, either body work or lactation. I generally recommend, and, and a lot of the really um, good pediatric dental providers who do phrenectomies recommend both lactation and some body work. Um, and then at home, what do you need to do? So at home, you need to be doing your suck training exercises. You need to be doing your um, finger sweeps and your, your exercises to make sure it doesn't grow back. So our body has this amazing ability to protect itself. And one of the ways it does that is through um, scar tissue okay so scar tissue really wants to help you but it's tight and not flexible and it's not actually going to help in this way the baby's not going to be able to mm, stick out that tongue it's not going to be able to lift it up high which is all movements that we want the tongue to be able to do right so by doing those exercises by putting your finger in and doing a little sweep or a little press depending upon how your provider talks about it, especially the upper lip one coming in and just pressing those will help the body not build up scar tissue. They should be very fast. It should take you, you know, a second to two seconds to do each spot. So if you're doing upper lip and tongue, you might even be doing lower lip. You might even be doing buccal. A couple of seconds, right, in the mouth. And then maybe two to three minutes doing suck training exercises. That's something a lactation consultant can meet with you and review how to put your finger in, work on the sucking this way, turning it over, working on the tongue coming up and cupping around the finger, working on does the tongue move side to side, right? Is it getting that lateral movement, getting the tongue to come up and out, doing these little exercises. You can even make them a game. You can sing songs. You can stick out your tongue and go, come here, baby. And a lot of times babies want to mimic, right? So you can do that and try to get baby to move that tongue and start figuring out how to work it. Okay, so we're talking about at home before feeds, a few seconds in the mouth doing the exercises for the tongue's movement and then two to three minutes of doing the suck training. Okay, not a lot, but essential. It should be short in the amount of time, long in the duration. Really, you know, two to three minutes total before feeds but for a total of up to five weeks, four to five weeks, okay? I think it's better to do fast little ones for a long time than to have you spend 10 minutes in the mouth but only do it for a week, okay? 
we really want to help the baby get maximum movement out of this tongue. Again, I'm going to go back to ther to surgery. It's like having physical therapy afterwards. You need to go home and do your exercises. You need to go to your physical therapy appointments if you want to have full range of motion and have that body part functioning as well as possible. You've got to do your work too. Okay? So that's really what we're talking about today. So you've had the phrenectomy or phrenotomy procedure. You are now at home with this baby and what do you do? So those are some really important things, doing your exercises, doing suck training. So I have links on my website uh, at cuddlesandmilk.com. You can look for suck training exercises. You can look for um, Dr. Yazdi's webpage has great stuff. He's in Castro Valley. So I have a link to his website on my page as well. And to Dr. Gahari, who's out of Portland. They all have great post-op exercises information and it can be really wonderful um, to look at the visuals, there's photos and there are videos. Okay, so that's it for today. We will continue on our tongue tie series next week. Happy Monday, everybody. Bye.